Hi, and welcome to our Intelligent Vehicle Podcast. I'm Gary Rubin. Joining me today to discuss how vehicles are morphing into connected devices and what that means for the driving experience is Ken Obershevsky, Director of Marketing for the Automotive Solutions Division at Intel Corporation. Ken, welcome. Thanks, Gary. It's, uh, it, it's great to join you today. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Okay, let's just jump right in. So as you see, the cars are really the next big connected device. How does this impact consumers? How do cars being so connected impact the drivers and passengers in a vehicle? Sure, yeah. I mean, that's a, I'd say a very relevant uh, topic for today. You know, given the amount of time people spend in their vehicles, you know, whether it's commute time to work go in the morning and going home every day or time taking uh, – kids around to all their events. So obviously, we spend a lot of time in our vehicles. And but honestly, what consumers want is they want the same experience they get in their everyday life in terms of having our devices being very intuitive with a great user interface, always connected. Um, you know, our, our smartphones have really taught us uh, what our expectations are that any moment in time we expect to be fully connected, uh, staying in touch with uh, you know, our latest emails that are critical to our work life or social networking, staying in touch with our friends and our families. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's talk a little bit more specifically about the apps that will be available to consumers in, in their cars. What are you seeing out there that's really interesting and what do they do and, and what would a driver be interested in, in hearing about today that this app was going to be available and here's what it's going to do. What are you seeing out there? So really what we need the car to do is to, uh, you know, what you might think of as an assistive user interface. So today, you know, the use of voice is very prevalent to kind of avoid distractions, whether it's doing a Bluetooth-based uh, voice phone call or using voice commands to, to be able to keep your eye on the road. But in the future, I think you'll see these technologies really uh, evolve as well whether it's things like gesture control, so uh, it's easier to use our touchscreen type interfaces. Future, I think you'll see uh, the vehicles even getting smarter as they learn our behavior patterns and anticipate uh, what we're going to do next, whether we're ready to go check the navigation map or to, to put a rod in there, or certainly as a call comes in to make it very natural to be able to, uh, to take that call. Let's talk a little bit about developers and uh, those who are developing apps specifically for the car uh, and the vehicle to make that vehicle more intelligent. What, what's going on there out there in the developer world that you see, and what tips or advice would you give to developers? So I think uh, you know that's a it's a very interesting uh, topic, and what I think is you, you won't see a one size fit all environment. Okay, what types of apps would I like in my vehicle? Well. Naturally, it'd be great if I could have access to the same apps on my Apple um, App Store, but you have to make some key decisions on whether that's relevant. I mean, first of all, are those apps relevant in a vehicle? You know, secondly, can they easily be integrated into the vehicle framework? And then thirdly, are those apps going to be safe in the vehicle? Are they going to create a driver distraction? So, uh, you know, I think what you're going to see as this evolves, is that um, all the OEMs will look to create a uh, a framework where apps can be brought in into the vehicle. And again, I think you'll see a different approach. So, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Ford has taken the approach with AppLink of allowing developers to actually create apps that uh, can be used in the vehicle. Um, BMW has. Uh, their own app store. GM just announced CES uh, this year, the GM MyLink for app development. So I think you'll see each of the automakers take a little different approach on how to, how to enable this, but I think we as the consumers will ultimately benefit from it. Good. Okay. So I think you covered the problems that these apps solve and ROI benefit for drivers. We've, we've covered that as well. Let's put the crystal ball in front of you. Where are we headed with these apps? Uh, in vehicles overall. Is there a limit to what really can be done in in an intelligent car? In terms of, you know, what types of apps, you know, I think the, you know, the types of apps are really endless. One of the key things now is ride sharing. So you can have a ride share app to find out who's going, where you're going, you can share rides. You know, you can have practical apps like identifying gas prices or 
concierge services like you know movie theater tickets and whatnot. You know, see some of the features you can get with uh, with Sirius XM today. You know, again, things like uh, fuel efficiency and, and optimization apps. Again, I think you'll see definitely evolve where things will be more integrated into the vehicle infrastructure, where the vehicle diagnostics will be integrated into the IDI systems. You know, where eventually you'll be able to guide the driver on how to drive the car more efficiently for fuel efficiency optimization, pick the right routes, what type of driving are going to optimize for that. Uh, you can have apps like uh, finding parking spots if you live in a big city. So I think the, uh, the options for, for the apps, both for convenience, for optimization of your vehicle, and of course, you know, safety as we go forward as well, I think you'll have all those at, uh, at your disposal. Ken, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Gary. It's been a very interesting discussion, and I look forward to talking again in the future.